If I give you John Sattler, this is going to be a treat. Uh, what I'd like to do now is, uh, these are different faces of our guest, of John. Uh, you need to know what shaped and informed him as a young man growing up outside Pittsburgh. He was a, a, a nationally ranked wrestler. Uh, his dream was to go to Penn State, but you ended up going to the academy, and indeed you went to the NCAAs three times. And, and it's a big part of your life, except you remember, like all wrestlers, you remember the match you lost, didn't you? It's a long list, but I remember that. <laughs> <laughs> I wish it was one or two names, but I'd be uh, disingenuous if I said that. But I learned something from every one of those thumpings, you know. Yeah. And what doesn't kill you makes you tougher. I am one tough son of a gun. <laughs> <laughs> you know, as I look at those different sort of faces yeah. of you, I think the face you're most comfortable in is the lower right when, when you're, you're in your fatigues and you're out with the men and women. Uh, yeah, I yeah. mean, I, I think same as in business. You know, it's, it's one thing to be in the boardroom. It's another thing to be, you know, escorting VIPs around. When you get to be a leader, if you think it's the corporate dining room, the parking spot, the, uh, the first class tickets on the airlines, uh, the truth be known, those are all distractors. They detract away from you and being that selfless servant you know, with your men and woman, uh, women leader. You know, I, I mean, if you start to feel entitled, you need to have a friend that has a Louisville slugger and willing to use it. You know, yeah. Whack you once and uh, get yeah. you back online. Tell us uh, a bit about your story. So you grew up with nine siblings. Uh, what helped shape and inform your character? And, and talk maybe a bit about just sort of your Catholic upbringing and what role that, that played in, uh, in a quiet way, making you part of who you are today. So just because we had nine kids, you assume we were Catholic? Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, a little birdie told me. Whack. <laughs> <laughs> also, we went a strong Catholic family. Uh, really? Oh. Did you get, wow, how about that, yeah. I still remember my senior year in high school, I was a... I was you could have been Mormon too, by the way, why we play stereotypes here, so part of my family's Mormon, I'm allowed to say that. I was, <laughs> I was president of the Older Boys Society my senior year. Uh, you know, I was kind of like Richie Cunningham, I diverted later on in my life, so, but, uh, but I was sort of that, that kind of guy, that's just the way we grew up. Strong family values, during Lent we went to Mass, all of us got up and went to church every morning, and, uh, and my dad, uh, he had a moral compass that I think it was painted on the wall. It, it wasn't a free-flowing noodle. Every, mm. Everything he did was, it was easy. You know, he, if, it ha, if it was moral or ethical, the decision, he knew what it was. It was just how you're going to implement it. So he didn't so, have to look at some rule book or no, he Nor just did knew. he have to go, how am I going to look at the end of the day? Will I have more money for my family and my kids? No. If it was ethical, it was, it was black and white for him. Yeah. You know, uh, you like sports. Uh, I suppose a few people in this room sure. do. And I've noticed this year the Navy, the Navy lads are doing pretty well, aren't they? T uh, I think fill us in. Seven and two right now. Uh, and we were talking, and uh, they beat Notre Dame this year. They've had the last three games, they were underdogs. Lost their starting quarterback and lost their team captain, middle linebacker. It looked like it was going to be a, a cataclysmic season. But we have the opportunity to take all of our team captains at Navy. We bring them all together and take them to Gettysburg for an offsite. All of them are 21, 22. We bring them all together at Gettysburg, and we only pound three things. We call it a commander's course, like you might take your executives to an offsite. And what we do is we tell them three things. You must define what is your uncompromising standard, i.e., what does good look like? If I come to practice or I come into, into my company every day, I don't know what good looks like. I'll make good up in my own mind. So they have to define that. They, that's uncomfortable for them. They don't like that. They just want to play hard, lead by example. You know, that's I'll play hard, and by me playing hard, the team will play hard and we'll win all our games. But it, it's more than that when you it's get into that. the character. So define the standard. The next thing, even harder for them, we make them define loyalty. What is loyalty in your organization? Loyalty to my workmates, uh, loyal to the company, or is it loyalty to the core values and the, uh, of what the company stands for? So once they define a loyal, the last thing we do is we make them write at age 20, 21, 22, an action plan on how are they going to take their definition of what good is, looks like, defining loyalty, have an action plan to get buy-in from all their co, because they may be appointed the company commander with 145 working, but they're all midshipmen. Well, Admiral Scott Redd graduated in 66, a dynamite, dynamite sailor, went on to be a three-star, stood up the counterterrorism center after 9-11, just an unbelievable quality uh, individual. So we asked him, what would be three things you'd tell these young college you know, men and women coming in? He said, first of all, I'd tell them that your calling is to be a warrior. 
I don't know why you came here, but you're staying here because you're going to be a warrior. You're going to, you're going to lead men and women, possibly in a harm's way, and win the nation's battles when called upon. Mm -hmm. That's the reason why you're here. So your calling is to be a warrior. Second thing he said is that your job will be to be a leader. I mean, you, you may have a physics major, you know, aerospace engineering. We have some of the smartest people in the world going to be astronauts. But your, call, you know, your, your number one responsibility when you walk out the door is to be a, a leader. Hmm. And, and the third one is your credentials uh, aren't your diploma. Your credentials are your character. Your hmm. character. What is in your wheelhouse of character when you walk out? I mean, so you think about that. And the beauty of it is... Who, can, who controls your character? You do. Mm -hmm. So that one third of which you, your character comes in. If you have to go look where I went to school, look where I got my doctorate, my PhD, you know, my master's or whatever, then, then you're looking in your rear view mirror. Yeah. And Admiral Red would say, through the windshield, my friend, looking through the windshield to, to lead, motivate, and inspire people.